We want you to picture something. Imagine walking into a room full of friends. How do you feel? Surely warm and fuzzy. Now flip the scenario. You walk into the same room, but this time your friends do not want to include you. How do you feel now? Not good, we imagine. This hypothetical scenario comes from a study. Participants were asked these questions. While they imagined the scenarios, researchers took their brain scans. And here's what they found. The two scans were completely different. During the second scenario, where the subjects felt left out, their brains got a negative signal. This activated pain responses. And why are we telling you this? Not to rehash painful memories of middle school. This study shows what the lack of social connection what loneliness does to us. While it may not seem that way, despite the taboo, loneliness is a biological issue and it can be painful. It is a gap in social connection, the gap between the level of connectedness that you want and what you have. Think of lonely loneliness like hunger. No one likes a rumbling stomach, especially when it sounds like a newly awakened beast, but hunger is important. And what hunger does for food, loneliness does for social relationships. It works like a motivator, telling us when we need more support. And much like persistent hunger, regularly feeling lonely is a big problem. Globally, 33% of adults are said to be lonely. Half of Brazil is lonely, followed by Turkey, India, Saudi Arabia and Italy. But the problem is not limited to these countries, of course. The World Health Organization calls loneliness a global public health concern. It is as deadly as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It increases the risk of early death by 39%. It is undisputed that loneliness is a deadly problem, so why don't we have a solution for it? Because we focus on quick fixes. Last year, the US Surgeon General issued an advisory. He said, participate in in-person activities like volunteer, vol volunteering or sports. Japan, where about 90,000 people are expected to die of loneliness this year, has a minister of loneliness. So does the UK. They also have an initiative for the British Mail Service where carriers check in with residents on their routes. The UK has chatty benches as well. So do Sweden, Ireland and Australia. These are park benches where strangers can talk to each other. So different countries have different solutions. Yet. There is a loneliness epidemic. And why is that? Because we are looking at it wrong. First, loneliness is a multidimensional emotion. It has elements of sadness, pain, anxiety, and fear, and it is subjective. Some lonely people may see the chatty bench as an opportunity, but others may fear it. So it's not that simple. Secondly, where does the onus lie? Because this is not just a personal problem, it's also a policy issue. You see, it works like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The lesser time you spend with people, the lonelier you get, and the lesser you want to be around people. It's like a vicious cycle. So yes, people should forge connections, and governments are not wrong in urging this, but doing just that will not help. It hasn't helped. We live in the age of social media, in the age of wars and pandemics, falling belief in religion, falling marriage and birth rates, and shrinking families. So how we communicate has also changed. We are not all going to join a running club or talk to strangers in parks, and our children may not grow up around our parents. Social connections do not work like they used to, so all we can do is adapt. We can reach out to more people via video calls, or we can hold meetings over Zoom calls, but occasionally meet for a team lunch in person. You basically need realistic solutions, surely on a personal level, but about time our governments get with the program too. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We are counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.
Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative. Hello and welcome to First Coast America. I'm Eric Hamm, coming to you live from the nation's capital. 